Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. So in this series, I've been building Spotify and I'm going through the whole process. I built an artist dashboard where the artist can sign up, upload their music. They can also link their bank accounts and get paid out. So that's what we did in the last video. We added payments and I'm really excited to get into this video where we're going to add streams. So right now we're not counting the streams when you play a song we don't count that stream or anything but that's how the artists are gonna get paid is we can pay them off based on how many times their music was streamed as you can see each of these songs belong to different artists and in our app we're gonna set that up right now so we can pay out the artists we can count the streams and then we can add more information into the artist dashboard so let's just go ahead and sign in as an artist I don't even remember what artist I was using last time. I know I signed up and I put like the bank account and everything, so I might want to sign in as that artist. Let me see. Let me check. Oh shit. Forgot to go in Rails console. Check the artist all last. So they're actually their stripe status is awaiting onboarding, so I don't think that's the one that I was using. Here we go, this one's payouts enabled. And I use this email, so I'm gonna sign in at them. Let's do, oh wait, I'm signing up. <laughs> Whoops, I need to log in. All right, here we go. So this is my artist dashboard, as you can see. So it shows that I have $30 in my bank account. And that's just because I did payouts to this account, but I haven't really added in like the streams or anything, because we don't have any way to display how many streams I got on my songs. Also, I think I don't even have any songs now that I look at it. But I never added songs for this account. So we're going to need to post some songs. And then we're going to add in streams. And put that all together. And pay out the artists for how many streams they got. Maybe we'll do that like every day or something. I don't know. But let's get into it right now. Alright guys, let's get back to this. Setting up the whenever gem. So it looks like it should have set up a schedule.rb file. Let's look inside a config. Oh, and I do see the file. It's pretty cool. So I guess it's as simple as just saying every and then so amount of days. So let's say every one day do. And it should work. Oh, and you can use Rails Runner. So Runner lets you like run some code as if you were in Rails console. Or we could do command, or we can just say rake. So we're gonna do the rake task. Rake payout artist. You can probably use a string or this. So now to test this, I'm pretty sure we could just restart the server and the whenever gem would automatically run that like every day. I'm not sure how to test it. <clears throat> Testing it is kind of important. Oh, whenever test is an extension to test to whenever gem. Okay, cool. So basically, you can add that for your specs. Although nobody's com nobody's contributed to this for seven years, so I wouldn't really trust this that much that it still works. I don't know. Maybe I would, but probably not. Anyways, I think that's good. Right? I mean, we can't really test. I guess we could... Let's do it even shorter. Instead of every one day, let's just do like every one minute. <laughs> and just see if that like does anything different. Let's restart the server. I'm not even sure. Because it should just run. I don't know if it would show it like the logs inside the console. But let me go ahead and like play some more of the songs so that we have more money to pay out. Let's see, I don't even know. Also, I wonder if whenever only runs in production too. It's possible. Does whenever... Does it work in development mode? Okay. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Clear existing cron jobs. Update cron job with the environment. Interesting. I don't even know, like, what is cron tab? What the heck is that? That's actually, like, some sort of library. I clicked it. I pressed it, and now it's all laggy. All right, I don't know. Let's put the let's just put it back to every one day. I'm pretty sure this should work, but I'm not a hundred percent. It's helpful to understand how cron works first. That's probably true. I just ran cron tab. Oh, cron tab dash r. It says no cron tab for for Indigo. Wait, why not? We can go ahead and update our cron tab. <laughs> Just like that, it says updated. And if I do the dash R, it still just says no cron tab, so I don't know. Oh, cron tab dash R clears all current cron jobs. Oh. So we can update cron tab, set the environment, and then now it should work. So we can test it out if I want to do like every one minute like I was saying should actually work I started the server now I just need to wait for like a minute but it is kind of tricky does that mean we have to do that when we deploy to production or does it just work right away? Just to update your cron tab file for your jobs, execute this command. Ooh. I still don't really know what that means. <clears throat> Let's see if if it is working though, our artist account should have like gained some new money. Oh, I think it no, that's the web. I definitely wasn't doing anything. All right, let's sign in as an artist. Maybe we call it like indigo tech. No, it's still 3450. So it's definitely, they didn't pay out. They did not pay me out. So that's not working. Let's put it back. Man, I don't even know. I don't know how to test this, but I want to say like this is probably working. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's good for now. So we completed paying out the artists in this video, paying for the streams. Yeah, this is pretty chill. In the next video, we'll probably add in the subscriptions for the listeners. But yeah. Until then, guys. Stay tuned. Watch my other videos to learn more about just everything that I'm working on. And I'll see you again very soon. All right, everybody. I'm really excited to get into this coding and start adding in the features for building the streams. But first, my artist is going to need some songs because right now we don't have any songs. So, I'm sipping on coffee right now. I'm going to name this song Coffee. And I'm going to need some cover art. So let's go to Unsplash. Get us a picture of some coffee. Well, that actually looks so fancy. Wait, it's so much fancier than mine. I'm using this stupid disposable cup. Man, you're making me feel bad about my coffee. All right, we have an image. Now I just need an audio file. So, I do have a lot of those. Although I need to make more beats, make more music, honestly. Here, I have a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I'll create a couple songs. My next song is going to be called Avocado. I just like avocados. I don't think I have any right now. No more avocados. How can I, how can I lose my avocados? Anyway, so let's download. 
put the image and then the audio. Create song. There we go. I'm about to go. I'm about to be famous, honestly, guys. The next one could be called Shroom, short for mushroom. Let me look up. What happens if I just look up Shroom on here? Mmm. A lot of cool mushrooms. Now, I don't know what type of mushrooms those are, but I'll learn. Anyways, now we have three songs. Let's go back to the dashboard, and I'm just going to sign out for now. And then I'll head over to the music section of the app. All right, here's my music down here. And actually, now that I look at this, I wish that the newer song showed up on top instead of at the bottom. That's kind of like annoying me. So to fix that, it's actually pretty easy. Let's just go into the code, go into the controllers and that music controller. And you'll see on the show page, we have this songs equal song dot all. So it's just listing all the songs. And I'm pretty sure it's listing it from the first one based on ID. So like one, two, three but on the ID itself. So we actually want to do an order on this and we're going to use the created at uh, attribute instead which created at is an attribute that's added to all the models in your Rails app. It's by default, it's always there. So we'll say created at descending. I'm pretty sure that means, yep, the newest one is gonna show up first, which is just what I wanted in my app. Cause now I can listen to the new song. So I'm like, whoa, the song just came out. I'm gonna listen to it. Oh, I actually need headphones. Where did the headphones go? Oh, they're right back here. Although my hair is wet right now because I just took a shower. But let's hear. Wait, I don't hear anything. Oh, because I have my volume down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember this beat. It's a pretty good beat, actually. I'm already kind of, like, loving this Spotify app. It's just so easy. It's honestly better than Spotify already, guys. I think so. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the streams. Or, like, the listens whatever we're gonna call it probably streams now there's a few ways that we could do this guys so we could go we could create a whole new model called stream or something although stream could get confused with live stream so we might want to use listen just because we know like somebody listened to it or we could namespace it like uh because we call these songs we could call it like a song stream or like a, a music stream Whatever. It, I guess a stream is different than a than a live stream, anyways, because that's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know if we want to add live streams to this app, but it might be cool, like to expand to that. I don't know. I might be overthinking this. Anyways, we could do a simple count on the model. So that's one way. We could have like a stream count attribute on the song that we increment. So it starts at zero, and you go like one, two, go, just go and keep incrementing, and that would work pretty well. The only thing is if we want to store more information about each stream, like let's say you sign in as a user account, right? Let's just do that real quick. I don't even remember anything. I don't remember my password or anything, but let's sign in as a user, right? And let's say you want to be able to see which songs you've listened to. So you can go to like a history, maybe in this drop down, we could have like a history of all the music you listen to, or even just somewhere on the app. That's where we'd want to hook in more information on each stream because we'd want to attach the stream to a user and the song so you could see your own history. And then also if you want to store like the listen time, so how much each person listened to the song, that's another reason to have a whole model behind the stream. So there's just a few reasons and you might want to think about that when you're coding these type of features. Like do you need to add more information to something like that, to a stream or a view on a page or whatever. And for us, I think we do. So we're going to generate a whole new model. So I'm going to go into the terminal and let's generate this model. Actually, I wish I kind of want to change the color because it's a little bit ugly. Like a reddish color. I mean, it's it's not like really ugly, but it's just hard to. I never really realized, but it is kind of hard to see. I can actually change the theme, but this is different, right? Is this for isn't this for all of Windows? This isn't just for Ubuntu. Ooh, here we go. We can put some work in. So there's actually uh, there's actually different color themes. 
We were using like the Ubuntu one, which is kind of nostalgic, but at the same time, it's kind of ugly. Like that reddish color. I don't even know if they have anything better. One half dark. That's all right. Campbell. There's uh, even a vintage. Oh, that does look super vintage. What should I do? I don't know. Oh, we can also change the font. That's actually kind of sick. But it's weird they don't have more options. Oh, they do. Show all fonts. No way I could use some weird font. That'd be funny. Changing my font to something that's like hard to understand or read. <laughs> Handwriting. No, that's inc that's crazy. Now I want to like put it back to regular. This looks pretty bad. It's funny how fonts work. All right, you know what? I can discard change. Let's just discard it. Screw it. I might mess with that later. All right. Anyways. Let's create this model. All right, so now let's create that stream model. I'm gonna do that by running a Rails stream model command. And I'll put the name of the model, which is gonna be a stream. Now a stream is going to belong to a song, and it's also gonna to belong to a user. And I think that's probably good. So let's just press enter, run this migration. Oh, and then real quick, we do want to edit the migration file. So to do that, we can go into the code, go to the DB migrate folder and just go to the latest migration. Now what we want to change is the belongs to user. So right now null is false, which means it always is going to require a user. But I think in our app, we're going to allow like guest user. So if you're not signed in, you can still listen to a song and it should count as a stream. I think that makes sense. So we're going to change null to true for user, but for song, we can keep it false because a, a stream is always going to have to belong to a song. All right. Now we can migrate the database with rails db migrate and boom. Now we have a stream model in our app. That's pretty exciting. Now I'm going to go over to the app models folder and go to the stream RB. And we also have to add optional true on this belongs to user line right here so that we're able to create a stream without a user. Cool, so now we have the stream model set up. So now to actually count the streams and to do all of that stuff, what we would wanna do is, I mean, we could actually do this inside of the music controller, if you think about it. We have this audio player action. And I'm pretty sure what happens is we make a request to audio player and then inside of the views music, we have an audio player turbo stream where we're actually rendering the audio player, which means we call this audio player action whenever we switch songs, whenever we start, you know, listening to a new song, it automatically hits that URL to update the audio player. So why don't we just do it inside of here? So we can say, well, after, let's do it after we find the song. <laughs> we could say like song dot streams which I actually we don't have this association yet for both of those models we need to go add the stream association so let's go to user model first right has many streams and let's go to the song model and also has add a has many streams perfect so now in the music controller we could actually do a song dot streams create and we can pass in the user as current user and what's going to happen is if the current user is is not there it'll just show up as nil so this would work both ways but this will allow us to count the stream so let's see if it works now let's come in here i'm just going to start listening to song oh yeah this beats fire i snapped on that beat now let's look in the terminal and see what happens like in, we see that there was an insert into streams, which means we created a new stream. So now if I want to go to the Rails console and just get like the last audio, or not audio, wait, the song dot last. So the last song, it's the shroom song. Now we can check how many streams it has. 
by doing streams, you'll see that it returns a URL or a, <laughs> it returns an array. And now if we do streams.count, it actually returns the count right here. So it says we have one stream right now. And obviously if we come back, if we keep right now, it wouldn't do another stream, but if we clicked on another song and then clicked on it again, that should count as another stream. If we go back in the terminal, reload, do a count. Now you see we have two streams on the song. This is already pretty exciting to see this count go up. Now I know there's like a, there's a thing you can do in Rails. Hold up. You can add a, you can add like a count field onto a model for an association. And then that means that you don't have to make a query every time we want to get the streams count. Right now it's making query. As you can see, whenever you see something like this, where it's saying like select on a line, that means you're making a query to the database, which is fast. It's like 0.1 milliseconds, but we could totally avoid that query by just having a field that it updates automatically in Rails with the count of how many streams you have or whatever association. So I'm going to look that up real quick. Association count in Rails. Oh, it's called a counter cache. That's what I was trying to remember. So basically, you on your associations, I think you can add a field. We need to add counter cache true on the association. Or no, on the belongs to. Okay. So let's go to the stream model. Although, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, because it depends which one you want it on. So we could actually have it on both, but I'm just going to do it for the song right now. So belongs to song, counter cache true. All right, and now to access the cached counter value. I think we need a migration though. Oh yeah, look, it says we need to add a new column. So association name underscore count. So we need to add a streams underscore count field to the database. So I'm gonna do that real quick by doing Rails G migration commands. We add streams count to songs. Streams count is going to be an integer, just like that. And then we can do a Rails DB migrate. As you can see, it added a column to the songs model called streams count, and that should set everything up. So I think we might have to do a reset counters. So to populate count values of existing records, we need to run the reset counters method. So just like this, we need to do a find each. And then, yeah, I guess we have to do it like that. So we go song.find each song. And then song.resetCounters. I don't know, I don't get why we have to pass in the ID to itself. Song ID. And wait, what? oh, streams. Wait, I'm confused. I'm gonna close it off. Let's see, did that work? No, that did not work. <laughs> it said undefined method reset counters, dude. This okay, this must be so outdated. It says it's from 2019, it probably totally changed since then. That's annoying. Let me look at here for counters. Counter cache. I've definitely done this before. To fix a stale counter cache, you use reset counters. Oh, it says it's it's off the model itself. It's not off of the. Bro, there was a typo in that guy's thing because he was showing it was off of the instance. But it's really off the model, like the class. It's a class method. All right, so we ran now, and now it should have actually updated. So if we check the song dot last and see all of its attributes, it now has a new attribute called streams count, which will automatically update every time we create a new stream. And I'll show you how that works right now by playing the song one more time, <laughs> doing a reload, and then pulling up the song, and you'll see the streams count is already updated to three. So that's pretty sick. Just like that, we've added streams into the app. So you know what? Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to actually sign out.
and I'm going to go back to the artist dashboard. So what was, damn, what was that artist email? I have to pull it up. Artist.last. Oh, not that one. Actually, the little, the second to last. I need to log in as this dude. All right, we logged in. And now in the artist dashboard, I want to also, next to like the balance, I want to show your, like how many streams you've made. Maybe overall, or maybe just scope to like a certain time range. But let's do that. Let's go to the artist folder dashboard. And right next to the current balance. I'm actually just going to copy this, I guess, because it looks pretty cool. And then we could change some of this text. Your streams. <laughs> and then inside of here, we're going to display. Grab the current artist. We would basically grab the songs and then we'd want to sum the streams count. That's all we're going to do. Which we might actually want to meta cache this. I don't know if it's that important. If we're going to reuse it, then definitely we want to meta cache it. Or memoize it, I guess. What am I saying? Meta cache. <laughs> Alright, oh, it looks like they're stacked on top of each other. So actually, I need to add some styling to put them side by side. Let's do that. So actually, instead of with half, let's go with full. And then I'll just put a div around these two elements like this. Or actually, not the stripe. Yeah, yeah, actually, not the stripe on board. We're going to put it inside of the condition then. There we go. Because I don't want to affect the stripe onboarding styling. And then on this div, we can add grid, grid calls two, gap four. And let's maybe add a breakpoint. So on mobile, it's just going to be regular. All right, let's see what that looks like. Hey, it's not too bad, not too bad. You can see the balance and your streams. Why don't we just say like your total streams. Cool. All right, so yeah, that's pretty cool. From here, I mean, I don't know. We could just go listen to some more music, help out some people by streaming their songs. And then we could think about paying out the artists. I got some good music in here. Most of them are my beats. Yeah, for paying artists, that's kind of an interesting thing. So we'd almost need some sort of task that runs like every day. And we could start off by making a rake task. So a rake task is located in the lib folder tasks. You usually create these when you want to do stuff like on the model, like updating multiple models and stuff. And a rake task, you can use it by just typing in Rails and the name of the task. So it's kind of cool. Like let's say Rails, we had a rake task called like payout artist. We could actually make that. As you can see, it says unrecognized commands payout artist. But to create the task, we just create a file. Let's call it payout artist rb. And then inside of it, I don't even remember. Let's let's just look up a rake task. Check out a quick guide. All right, yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. So we'll do a task called payout artist. And actually, this is okay, but we wouldn't be able to access our Rails environment like this. So you actually have to change this to this. So basically it like inherits from the environment and somehow that makes it so that you can access all of your models and stuff. And then for the description, I'm just gonna call this payout artist for their streams. And then for this, we just say like payout artist now. This is just a quick console log so we can test it out. 
So now if we try to run Rails Payout Artists, wait, it should work. For some reason it didn't work. What the heck? Oh, maybe, we, I, f I thought you could use rake and rails interchangeable, but maybe you have to actually say rake. Rake payout artists. Still, no, still it didn't work. Oh, uh, so it says it doesn't know how to build this task, but we can see the available tasks by running rake dash dash tasks. This is actually cool in itself. Huh. I must be doing something wrong. There's all these different commands. That's kind of cool. But yeah, I don't see anything for paying artists. Weird, I must have done something. We literally, we made a task, or we made a Ruby file. We did the task. I wonder if it's the environment part. All right, let's change it to just the old syntax. Run rake tasks again. Still, not nah, still nothing. Yeah, totally didn't work. So uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I put it in the task folder. Like, why is it not working? Uh, that's so crazy. I've had this happen to me before too. Just like not working for some reason. I'm gonna look this up. Break task not showing up. Oh, they say you gave it a dot rb extension instead of a dot rake. Of course I did. I didn't know I had to have a dot rake extension. Okay, so that was the problem. Very simple issue, and I've definitely <laughs> I've struggled with that before. Just the it's really just the file extension. Yeah, I'm gonna thumbs up this guy. That's funny. Did he? Did this guy tell you to do a rake extension? He look he did, but he didn't like. Ex he didn't like really say how important it was to do the rake extension. All right, there we go. So we have this command, and this should supposedly pay out the artist. And I think what would happen is we'd run this every day, which means we could just do a scope for that current day, like how much we're gonna pay them. So let's write the script. I'm just gonna go through each artist. So we can do like a find each artist. And then I'm going to count how many streams they have. So streams for day could be like artist.streams. But yeah, we want to pull it off. Actually, we can't even... This isn't even a method right now, artist.streams, because we'd have to loop through all of the songs. But I think we can have a method on the artist model like this. I'm pretty sure. So let's go over to that artist model. So we have a has many songs. I'm pretty sure we can do a has many streams through songs and then pull out the artist streams. Let's see. I'm gonna go into Rails console and I'm gonna test this out. Artist.last. Okay, I wanna get I wanna get my one. Okay, so if I just call streams on this, oh it does work. I can pull out all the streams. So then it'd just literally be Doing a query again, actually, for the created at. Because we want to find only the streams that are from today. So we do time.now. Or actually, this is kind of important to think about. How would we decide, you know, what streams we're going to pay out? We might even want to add a field on the stream model that says if it's paid out or not, and then we could just use that. That'd be easier than using a time-based thing. Let's do that. I'm gonna add a new field, do Rails view migration, add paid out to strings, and then paid out is just gonna be a Boolean, either true or false. 
And then I'm going to edit that migration file in the db migrate folder and I'll set a default on the boolean. We're going to default to false. There we go. And then what's going to happen is, yeah, forget that. We're just going to pull out the streams where paid out false. Just like this. And then basically right here, we pay out the streams and then we can just update all of these streams to pay out. Update all. And get it through. As simple as that. Loop through each artist, do this process. So right here is kind of important. We have to figure out how do we pay out the streams with Stripe. So first we might calculate how much money to actually pay which depends on the algorithms we're going to use, like how much do you pay per 1,000 views, how much do you pay for one view. If you look at Spotify, they do... You can look up how much does Spotify pay per stream. And they pay like a ridiculous, stupid amount, like a millicent, three millicents, which means you have to get like basically a million views to get any sort of money out of that. And we can look up Apple. Apple pays one millicent. Or no, one. That's actually better. It's not millicent. It's like. How do you. 0 0.01. Zero 01 is like a tenth of a cent. Or no, not a tenth. A hundredth. Wait, what am I saying? Yeah, one. No, they literally just pay one cent. My bad. They pay one cent. They say, we pay double the competitor, Spotify. <laughs> they pay a whole cent per stream. Well, I don't even know what the math is. So if you get a million streams and you're getting paid one cent each, you have a million cents, a million pennies. That's kind of exciting, right? We can do better. You know what? Just for this video, we can do better than that. Now, I don't even know about the math or anything, but why don't we pay people... 50 cents a stream. 50 cents a stream, guys. That seems like a fair trade to me. We're going to do an amount to pay out. We're just going to take the streams to pay out. We're going to count them, and then we'll just multiply it by 50. Just like that. And then we're going to have the total amount to pay out. I'm just going to print this out. And actually, I'm going to comment out where we're going to mark it paid out because I don't want to do that until we actually have the logic in for paying out the artist. But now I'm going to run that task again and see what we get. Oh, it's saying paid out does not exist. Wait, didn't I just add paid out? Add paid out to streams. I did. Oh, I never migrated the database, right? We have to run Rails DB migrate. All right. Now let's run our task again. Check that out. Paying out the artists now. So some of them made like, you know, a good bit of money, like just a couple of dollars, but for a couple of streams, that's pretty good. That's really good because that money would add up. All right, this is sick. So now I'm going to look into adding some Stripe code to actually transfer that money to their bank accounts. Oh, another thing is we can only pay out artists who have Stripe enabled. So that's another thing. Most of these artists don't even have Stripe set up. So we can check the Stripe status, make sure we're only doing it for artists with pay payouts enabled. So let's come inside of here. Instead of doing artists find each, we're going to need to do a query first where payouts are actually where Stripe status is payouts enabled, just like that. We can find each and do this logic. So if I run the command, if I run this task again one more time, we should see now it's only one artist that we're doing it for because I only set up one artist account with like the bank account and everything for testing. Cool, so now we need to find out how can I pay out Stripe Connect.
pay out to a connected account. Exactly. So we have, yeah, we already got all of that. Create a top up. What's that? Why do they call it top up? To top up your stripe balance. What does that mean? Stripe is so weird. Like, why do they call it a top up? I don't even know what that means. Top up for week of this weekly top up. <laughs> I'm so confused. What is a top up? It doesn't even tell me what it is. I don't think I want to do that. Oh, right here. Pay out to your user. You can transfer available funds to a connected account. So this is what we want to do. Create the transfer and then add the account ID that we're transferring to. All right, that's super simple. So we'll do that now. Take the amount to pay out. We put that right here as the amount. And then we put the artist stripe account. So we can use artist stripe account ID. Wow, this is very simple. And we can uncomment the last line to say that we did pay them out. And boom, just like that, we have completed the logic for paying artists. That was easier than like most of the app. So bam, I just ran the commands. And just like that. You know what? Let's have a condition here. If amount to pay out is greater than zero, check if positive, then we can do the whole transfer thing. Actually, not that. We we need to check. If streams to pay out dot any, then we can run this code. Otherwise, we just skip it, which means we can run this task as many times as we want without worrying about like paying the artist more than once. All right, so now I want to go check if that worked by going to the Stripe dashboard. I have to log in real quick. Go, let's go, let's go. All right, right here, let's go to test mode. Come on. Now I'm gonna go to the connect accounts. Actually, another way we can, we don't even have to go in the Stripe dashboard because we can go to our artist dashboard. What am I saying? I forgot this email. I think it was, oh, what was it? Here we go. We logged in and look, our balance updated because before it was $30, now it's $34. That's sick. And as you can see, if we look in the Stripe dashboard, it shows that there was some more money added. Look, total balance, $4.50. So that was the new amount that we added. Which is actually funny. On the artist dashboard, it just shows 34. So I don't know if we're rounding. But we probably are. So let me fix that. Because I want to definitely show the sense too. So let's go to the controllers, artist controller. Right here, we're getting the balance. Actually, that's fine. Let's go to the views. Artist dashboard. Inside of here is where we're doing the division. So we're taking the number and we're dividing by 100. And then we're passing it to number to currency. But I think what we want to do is we want to turn it to a float. Maybe that will fix it. Let's reload. Hey, there we go. It fixed it. So now we can show the sense too. All right, this is sick. Right, so already we've added in so much to this out. Like basically this is Spotify. We've just built Spotify.
We have it all set up. Oh, the last thing I guess would be monetizing for the listeners. So the listeners could like sign up for a subscription to use this platform to listen to unlimited music and everything. But we already have the artist part set up. Now what I also want to do is I want to put that rake task to pay out artists. I want to put that on a timer so that we're going to run it like daily. And to do that, I usually use cron jobs. That's like a whole library that we can look into. It's a time-based repeating job. If you look up cron jobs for Rails, you'll find some good guides. Yeah, something like this. So we can use the whenever gem for this, I guess. Yeah, this is actually super easy. Super, super easy. Let's add this gem to the gem file. And now we can run, I think we just run a bundle. So he's saying bundle exec the file. Whenever you do this, it'll create a file named schedule.rb. Okay. So I ran it. It's saying command not found. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even know about that. But I added the gem. Whenever gem's right here. No, there's got to be a different example. I've never had to do that before. Oh, there's also the sidekick cron gem. So if we're using sidekick, we could do sidekick cron. But that means you have to use a class. I don't want to just use a cron job with a rate task. Tab. This guy says use whenever gem. I don't know, the whenever gem doesn't seem to be working. Let's see. Where's bundler? And then you're supposed to be able to run this. Oh, it's not. Dude, that guy had a typo in his article. He was like doing dot whenever as, but you're supposed to go the other way and add space. All right, guys, so I thought I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. I was talking for a few minutes, and I found out how to get this set up. So when I ran that whenevereize function, it generated this schedule.rb file in the config folder. And this is my script that I set up. So every one day, we're going to run our rake task like we did before. I'm just going to run it like this to pay out the artists. And that should set up everything for paying artists. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something new about using Stripe and building apps with Rails. Yeah, this was a really fun episode to do. I've never done anything like this. And this was like cool to just learn how to do this myself and also show you guys. So I hope you stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to add in subscriptions for the listeners, which is going to bring in money into the platform so that we can pay out these artists however much we want to pay them per stream. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good rest of your day. Watch my other videos too if you're still looking to learn some more stuff about coding. And yeah, see you guys next time.